As we continue through this summer, we continue a thread through the Gospels. And for those of you here who were here last week, you remember we had that miraculous feeding of the 5,000. All these people had gathered around Jesus and he was teaching and they were just soaking it all up. But as happens, as the day wears on, they got hungry and they hadn't really prepared to be there all day. And so Jesus' disciples came together and they took a very little amount of food and they broke it and they gave it and they kept giving it and kept giving it and everyone was full and they had 12 baskets left over. It was a fantastic experience and a fantastic day. Well, today in the gospel lesson, as we continue that thread, the people wake up and Jesus is gone and they want a little bit more of Jesus. And so they go off and they find him. And when they find him, Jesus says, the only reason that you are coming to find me is because you're hungry and you want more food. Now, let's just say, Jesus can be a bit judgy. And I think that in this moment, Jesus is a little bit harsher, perhaps, than we expect Jesus to be. I mean, think about what happened with these people. They were just absorbing all of this good stuff from Jesus, these teachings that were blowing their mind. And then when they were really hungry, he fed them seemingly out of nowhere. These people were so hungry. And at first, they were hungry for these teachings and these truths, these signs that Jesus is giving. But then they were hungry for actual food. Now, this food insecurity is something that we don't know much about, but they certainly would have felt. People back then would have easily gone a day or two without a lot of food, if any at all. And so for Jesus to not only teach them and give them such good stuff, but then to also give them food, yeah, they wanted more. And can you blame them? They were still hungry. And this man fed them. And so when they find him and Jesus says, the only reason you're coming is because you want more food, we get a glimpse at what the gospel writer is trying to tell us about this story. Now, yes, it is phenomenal when we hear a miracle, like Jesus takes some loaves and fish and he multiplies them and feeds them and feeds thousands of them. And we might think that that is the point of the story. And that's what we tell our children. And that's what we remember from Sunday school. And Jesus is a miracle worker. But the real underlying truth here in this gospel happens today. When the people follow after Jesus and they want more, Jesus says, you're looking for me because you're still hungry for food. But what I actually give you is well beyond the tangible food your bellies want. What the gospel writer is trying to do here in this story is tell the people in the first century and you and me that what Jesus provides for us goes way beyond our physical needs. Jesus provides a spiritual depth that we may only just know that we need, a spiritual truth that anchors us and roots us to who we were created to be and can give us strength and can fill us up to be the kind of people God made us to be. What matters most is not what Jesus can do for us, but who Jesus is. Now that's hard for us. That's a pretty difficult message for us because we are such transactional people. I mean, think when we're hungry, we need food. Yes, so we're naturally attracted to whoever can provide us some food. When we're worried about our health, then we're naturally attracted to the people who say they can heal us. When we're scared about our life now or perhaps the future, we can be attracted to anyone who promises to keep us safe. And when we're insecure about who we are, we can naturally be attracted by the world to hoard stuff and wealth and to feign security just so that we can quiet that fear in our hearts. What Jesus says in today's gospel cuts right to the core of what it really means to be human. Jesus is on the scene to meet people where they are, but he is definitely not going to simply leave them where they are. This gospel story is told so that everyone who hears it, and that does mean us, can come away with the desire and the understanding that Jesus is here to meet 
the deepest hunger that we have, not that surface level stuff, but that hole inside of us, Jesus is here to meet, to fill the hunger that we have. This is some good stuff. It is good stuff. And I've been rolling this around this week, trying to figure out what I might say today. But as I was trying to consider the theological heft of this story, it was difficult because I was watching like 10 hours of Olympic coverage every single day. (laughs) And so I tried to try to put these things together. And as I was listening to all the stories of the Olympic athletes, I know you're watching it too. I love this stuff. I began to read a bit, not about the current Olympic athletes, but more about the Paralympic athletes that will go to Paris shortly. And the stories of many of these Paralympians are stunning. And I ran across one that I thought was amazing. The story is about Melissa Stockwell. Melissa Stockwell was commissioned into the U.S. Army back in 2002. She responded to what happened at 9-11, and she was deployed to Iraq in 2004. And she became the very first female soldier to lose a limb in active combat when her vehicle was hit by a roadside bomb. Now, yes, she was honored with the Purple Heart, and she was given the Bronze Star, and she was given all of the accolades that one would expect a veteran to receive, but she as a person was changed forever, and she wrestled with what she could do now that she was not who she used to be. That kind of loss can be devastating. But for Melissa, she took that loss as a challenge, and began to stretch her new body in ways that she had never even tried to stretch her old body. And she developed a real sense of strength in this new body. And so as she began to practice and train, she was the, she began to compete and she qualified for the 2008 Paralympic team in Beijing. And she went on to medal multiple times. She was in every single Paralympic since then. And she just a few weeks ago qualified for the Paris Paralympic Games. So you can see her and watch her there. Her story now is something that she takes around and speaks about. And what's interesting about Melissa is that she knows deep down that what gave her the strength was not her muscles and it was not prosthetics, it was not medicine. What gave her strength was the spiritual anchor that she had. And it was something that she hadn't really developed much until she was challenged in such a profound way. Now, we know life can be hard. All of us experience difficult circumstances. Thankfully, most of the time, we don't live in difficult circumstances, and life is relatively comfortable. But when life comes at us, and we experience something tragic, something horrible, something scary, that's when the anchor that we develop in our spiritual life in Christ can really sustain us. That's when we know we need more than just the surface stuff like food to fill our bellies. That's when we know that Jesus is giving us strength for every single one of our journeys, both the highs and the lows. We all look for signs from God. Back in the first century, these great people got a sign with the loaves and the fishes. And just like that, we might be seeking after signs from God. And the world would have us believe that signs are hard to find. I often speak with people about how they look for signs. And unfortunately, the Bible makes us look for things like feeding 5,000 people with some loaves and fishes. But the signs that God is present and working in our world and working in us can be far simpler and often far more subtle. There are signs everywhere of people being kind and showing love, of people showing up when you go through something hard, of us having the strength to move through dark, low places in our lives. I see people in this church all the time giving of their time and their talent and their treasure, generously sharing whatever kind of gifts that they have just in the last few weeks. I've seen people shift in the way that they coordinate our Sunday worship. The hundreds of people who have had to change where they prepare and where they stand and how they walk and how they get from one place to another because we have a vision for what our church campus can be, and that is not easy. And yet with a generous spirit, they are making all these changes and spending extra time making sure that we can sit here right now 
and worship God together. I see people spending hours in the hot sun giving out uniforms and school supplies to thousands of families right here in Dallas who are in need. I see people traveling beyond our borders, our teens and our adults, to show children outside the U.S. that they are not alone and they are loved. I see people praying every day for strangers in this church who are sick or who are grieved. What people do with their gifts help sustain all of us and are the signs that point to the wonder of God's grace. People give and give again, and you can give and give again. And to discover the secret that the more we give, the more we get, we never run out because the anchor and the root of our strength is Christ, who is eternal and who continues to fill us over and over and over. As the summer begins to wind down, it would be easy for us to look forward to the fall, especially this fall, with a little bit of trepidation and anxiety, and yet do not let the world worry you or cause you to be scared, because the strength we have in us is a God full of grace who can, through us, show signs of power and love to every person in this world. God gives that to you and to me. And so do not hold it back. Share and give and bear witness and be the signs of God that every person looks for. Amen.